All right, last lesson we talked about uh, geometric sequences. Um, now, of course, we'll look at geometric series, so where we will take a geometric sequence and find basically just the sum of it. Okay, and so that's what a geometric series is. A geometric series is the sum of the terms of a geometric sequence. For example, a geometric sequence is 3, 9, 27, 81. The related geometric series, of course, all I've done is I've just put plus signs in between there. All right. So uh, for this one, S sub n is going to represent the partial sum of n terms of a series. What you're going to notice about this section is that we're not going to go uh, to an infinite amount. So these ones are all going to be partial sums. Next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, infinite geometric series. All right. And so um, we, we've kind of done, you might recognize this before, we kind of did this a little bit. And uh, so we're going to look at this in terms of geometric ones. So in terms of using um, this series above right here, uh, let's take a look how we can do use partial sums. So of course, all we do is we just add those terms together. So the sum of the first first the sum of the first term is just three. Sum of the first two terms would be the first two terms, three plus nine, which gives us twelve. The sum of the first three terms is three plus nine plus twenty seven, which is thirty nine. And lastly, if I wanted to go and get the sum of the first four terms, it would be three plus nine plus twenty seven plus eighty one which gives me 120. And I could do that as far as I want, except we are going to make these specific geometric series stop somewhere. So that dot, dot, dot may keep going, but it is going to stop at some number. Okay. Um, how to calculate these. All right. And this is going to be another one of the um, formulas that in class I'm going to be working with you and showing you how you derive this. All right. So um, the nth term of geometric series is the nth term of a related geometric sequence. So for the geometric series T1 plus T1R, all this means is that I'm just taking the first term and I'm multiplying it by the common ratio, and then I do it again, multiply by the common ratio again, that's why it gets to R squared. All right, and keep going. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say the first term was 2, and we're going to have a common ratio of 3. Okay. To get the next term, we of course would multiply by 3, so the next term would be 2 times 3. And the term after that, I have to take it and multiply it by 3 again, or I can just go 3 squared. So we'd have 2 plus 6 plus 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. So that's where that notation comes from. Okay, And so that's the equation that we're going to be working with in, uh, in this lesson. And we have an easy example to start with, and then we'll progress to some uh, more difficult stuff. So uh, let's start out with the, our equation here. S sub n is equal to the first term all multiplied by 1 minus r raised to the power of n, or our common ratio raised to the power of n, uh, minus, or sorry, 1 minus the common ratio. Okay, and like I said again, we will look in class about uh, how this is derived. So, let's take a look at this uh, one right here. They're looking for the sum of the first 12 terms. Um, so, we are looking for s sub 12. We know the first term is 3. 1 minus r. Do we know what r is? Well, we need to find out what your common ratio is. So, if you recall, what you can do is just take these two terms. 12 divided by 3 gives you 4. 48 divided by 12 gives you 4. My common ratio is 4. So we can do all this. 1 minus 4. Now, we have r raised to the power of n. Since they're looking for 12 terms, we'll put a 12 up here. All right? And this is one where I'm not going to even do anything else without just using my calculator right here. So we'll get this guy up and running. We have 3 brackets, 1 minus 4 raised to the power of 12. I'm just going to hit enter and do everything in the numerator first. And then I'm going to go and divide that by 1 minus 4. So if I do divide that, I can just divide it by negative 3. Or if you want to use brackets, you need to use brackets here, even though there's not uh, brackets listed. If you just go 1 minus 4, you might have difficulties here. Uh, 1 minus 4, and you're going to get a ridiculously huge answer, but believe it or not, that actually is the uh, the right answer. Because if you look at this, 
If we go back to this um, series, you can imagine 12 terms from now, that number is going to get fairly big. And then plus, we're determining the sum of them all, so we're adding them all together. So we get 16,777,215. That's what the sum of the first 12 terms would be. Example two, if you turn your page, um, and I, I want to remind you guys as you're going through these, please um, don't bother necessarily watching all of this. Uh, I would I would just uh, encourage you guys to try some of these questions on your own, then fast forward to the answer, see if you got the answer right. If you got the answer right, you have all the work shown, then I'm uh, I'm happy. I am going to want to see all of this work um, done at some point when you have your uh, hot seat meeting with me. Of course, if you don't have this work done during the hot seat meeting, I'm going to direct you to go and finish it before you can earn an opportunity to write your test. All right. Example two. The sum of the first 14 terms of a geometric series is 16,384. The common ratio is negative two. Determine the first term. So, uh, I find this one a little bit more confusing than the last one. I like to write down on the side here for one like this, maybe what my info is. So the sum of the first 14 terms, so we know that n is going to be 14. We know that the geometric sum, or the sum of the first 14 terms, I guess I can write it like so, is 16,383. What else do they tell you? They tell you the common ratio r is equal to negative 2. All right. And that's all. They want the first term, so they want t1. Well, if you think into the little equation, the equation has t sub 1 in there, so we're just going to use the same equation again. Sum of the n terms equal to the first term, multiplied by 1 minus r, a common ratio raised to the power of n, to 1 minus r. Let's substitute into this equation. We have s sub n, which is 16,383, is equal to my first term, t1. I'm going to use brackets inside of brackets here. We have 1 minus r, now r was negative 2, raised to the power of 14, close those brackets off, all over 1 minus negative 2. Now, I don't have a lot of real estate here, but I'm going to try and simplify that the best that I can. And I'll show you how we're going to go about uh, doing this. So we have t1, and then we have brackets 1 minus. Now we should be able to do this uh, in our heads, yeah, maybe not. So, we'll take negative 2, and we're going to actually take it with brackets here. Raised to the power of 14. Since we're raising a negative number to an even exponent, we should expect it to be positive, and it is. We have 16,384, all divided by 1 minus negative 2, or 3. Okay. Now, simplifying this further, I'm going to write down here and then just erase it after. We have 16,383 is equal to t1. And then this is going to be 1 minus 16,384, so that'll be negative 16,383. All divided by 3. And lastly, we're going to try to isolate t1. We should be uh, pretty experienced with this in order to isolate for t sub 1. Here, what we're going to do is we'll take 16,383, come on, and multiply it by 3, and divide by negative 16,383. Now, you probably didn't even need to write those out. Those numbers are, of course, going to cancel. And so we see that your first term is just going to be negative. Three, the negative, of course, coming from down here. All right, now uh, I'm going to get rid of this just to free up some space down here for our uh, third example. Uh, so let's go and get rid of that. Now, this next one here. It says calculate the sum of the geometric series, negative 3, negative 15, negative 75, negative da 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 keeps going on. All right, so obviously this uh, sum is going to be very negative, if you will. And uh, so let's give this a try. So let's talk about the information that we know. We know the first term, t1, is equal to negative 3. We know that the nth term, we don't have any idea what that term is right here, but we know it's some n terms down the line, is negative 46,875. We know that r is equal to, well, if you take a look, if you take the negative 15 and you divide it by negative 3, you get 5. So these numbers are being multiplied by 5 each time. Do we know what n is? How many terms we're looking for? Mm, no. Do we know the sum of the n amount of terms? Not so much. Okay. So, this is an interesting one because in order to use this equation, which we would normally use right there, you must know n. 
right? Because it's that, if you remember, it's that uh, 1 minus r raised to the power of n. So before we can even get there, we need to first determine, first determine n using the equation tn is equal to t1 r onto n minus 1. Remember that good old one? Because if you take a look now, we you guys are going to have all these formulas together. You need to um, be able to work with them uh, and see what information you have in order to find other things. Because I have everything that I need here. For instance, tn I know is negative 46,875. I know the first term is negative 3. I know the common ratio is 5. And I do not know what that is. All right. So now I'm going to try to isolate for that 5 raised to the power of n minus 1. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. When I divide both sides by negative 3, I get 15,625. And that's equal to 5 raised to the power of n minus 1. Now at this stage, if you were doing this, you are going to guess and check to figure out what that n is going to be. Save us some time right here. Um, I've gone ahead and guessed and checked, and I found out that that was 7. So when you go 7 minus 1, you're going to get 6, and you will find out that that'll give you 15,625. So we now know that I can go back over to here if you want. I'll just highlight this so you can see where I'm at. And I can replace this n with a 7. Okay, so that was a 7 right there. Lastly, we can substitute into our equation. We have Sn is equal to T1 to 1 minus r to the power of n, all over 1 minus r. Substituting in our info, we have our first term is negative 3. 1 minus our common ratio is 5. So 1 minus 5 raised to the power of 7 all to 1 minus 5. And let's crunch these into our calculator. We have negative 3 onto 1 minus 5 raised to the power of 7. So that would be your numerator divided by negative 4, 1 minus 5. And that gives you negative 58,593. And remember, we were expecting that when you added, of course, all these negative numbers together, we were going to have a very big negative number, and lo and behold, we did. Last question before uh, we push on. It says, why can the sum of n terms of a geometric series formula also be written the same way, only if you notice right here, this has been reversed, and that has been reversed. Okay, if I compare this up to this equation right here, you guys see that uh, the only thing that's changed is that uh, has been reversed? Okay, so why can it be written like that? Right? And then I go on to ask the second question, and why does it make sense to use this form of the rule? Well, let's answer the first question first. So, numero one. Why can the sum of n terms, uh, why can the sum of n terms of an, I don't know why it says n, that's not good, of a geometric series formula also be written in this different way? Well, if you take a look, my answer would be it will not change anything since the numerator and denominator have been changed and the two positives or negatives will not change the outcome. For instance, I'm going to do a slightly different example. I think you'll see the relation. If I have 1 minus um, 1 minus 2 all divided by 3 minus 4. Okay, we're going to simplify that, but I'm also going to go 2 minus 1 all over 4 minus 3. Okay, so if you take a look at these, they're basically the same thing. I've just changed the order. Well, let's, uh, let's simplify them. See if we get 1 minus 2, we give you negative 1. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. That gives you 1. Let's see what we get over here. We have 2 minus 1 is 1. 4 minus 3 is 1. So you see that changing the order doesn't make any difference for those. Okay. 
the second question they asked was, why the heck would you want to do this? Well, um, I want you guys to think about this one on your own, and we're going to talk about it in class. 